Sorry, guys. I was just um, texting my buddy there, and it looks like we are live. So I'm trying to figure this out, but I can't see anything. I'm looking at a black wall, <laughs> so I can't tell that I'm live. Anyway, um, okay, so uh, there you go. All right, well, thank you for that. And what I thought we'd do on here, and we'll just see how this goes, is I'm in the studio narrating uh, an audiobook for Fred Dodson. And uh, it's uh, about like watching paint dry, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I've got enough uh, time here that we could do a little bit more, and then I have to break away and go in and do a reading. So I'm just going to pick up. Uh, sorry for the just sitting there with nothing, but we'll get this figured out, and um, then maybe we can do this um, more. And especially when we get over to the book Parallel Universes of Self, I'm looking forward to... Um, turning it on more when we do that. So this is kind of a beta for that. So forgive the scratches. It's live. There you go. So I have an audio booth. It's about, what, six feet? Like I can stretch my arms out six feet this way, and I think it's five feet this way, and it's about seven feet tall. All foam padded. It is my office, and it's where I do everything. And I have a great little setup in here, and at some point I'm going to get a GoPro and stick it up over my shoulder so you can see the the layout here as I see it. We'll get that in place at some point, but that'll take some rigging. But um, yeah, so let's just see what we do here. <clears throat> I'm going to show you raw and real what goes into putting an audiobook together. And you can see on the screen, I use this little technique called punch roll recording. And I can set a spot, but just these few examples should suffice. Or not. No, unfortunately not. Fred's being a little sarcastic there. But, um, yeah, so what I do is I put a mark right there, and then, unfortunately not. It picks up where I just marked, and I can keep recording. See, that's how that works. Unfortunately not. It picks up where I just marked. So that's what you'll see me doing all the time, and that's how I do everything. I do my podcasts, audiobooks, everything that's done in here is done with that technique, and it saves a lot of time. And then I drink a lot of hot chai tea with a little bit of cayenne pepper and some stevia to sweeten it. I don't put any milk in it because it's bad for your cords, but that's I sip on this a lot, and it's like lube for my vocal cords. So there's a lot of this going on, too. And then the other audiobook narrator's secret is you periodically have to stop and brush your teeth because clicks start to appear in the uh, sound, and we don't want that. Okay, let's see what we got here. So he says, or not, and I don't pre-read the book either. I've done, I've worked with Fred long enough that I don't need to pre-read anything. But I'm the, you know, I'm the narrator and the producer, so I have to catch myself when something doesn't sound right, and then I go back and listen to everything and make sure that I complied to the script and that um, uh, that it sounds good. So if there's a section that doesn't sound good, I come back and just replace that. All right, here we go. I've got about 30, 25 minutes here, so and then I've got to go to do a reading. Unfortunately not. A sign of intelligence is to extrapolate information. If I cite an example of reptilian infiltration in the medical industry, the smart listener will extrapolate and think, hmm, okay, how might I apply this in the software industry? Or what is the reptilian mindset in the military? The great dumbing down could entail that people no longer extrapolate. You didn't give any examples of the software industry, Fred, so I thought it's fine. Here's a fact. The last three laptops with Windows operating system that I have purchased were manufactured by Asus, Lenovo, and Toshiba. They were the high price range. If you asked me which of these laptops is better, I couldn't tell you because they were almost exactly the same. I call this fake choice or fake competition. As far as I can tell, each of these quote-unquote brands are made by the same people. Otherwise, you would find the real difference. The same goes for rental car companies. How do they differ from each other? 
or airlines? What sets one airline apart from the other? The airlines within the United States are almost identical and equally low quality. When I use an airline, I am sent a long questionnaire in which I'm supposed to expound on how wonderful my experience was with them. <clears throat> experience was with them, but I fail to see what sets one airline apart from another. There are only a few airlines I've seen that are truly a class above the rest. The trend toward uniformity and blandness of a... Re <clears throat> see, there I missed something. Let's see what he says. Sometimes with Fred, you have to figure out where we're going here. The trend toward uniformity and blandness is of a reptilian mindset. That's above the rest. The trend toward uniformity and blandness. And that's true with anybody. I mean, you, you hit a sentence and you have to get those inflections right on the words to make the sentence sound, you know, the way he intended it. <clears throat> a class above the rest. That trend toward uniformity and blandness is of a reptilian mindset. The reason is that reptilians have a hive mind in which... You know, reptilian reptilian mindset. The reason is that reptilians have a m reptilian mindset. The reason is that reptilians have a hive mind in which uniqueness and individuality are not much valued. From this you could extrapolate that communism is a reptilian philosophy. You could extrapolate anything about everything if you were to regain the power to think for yourself. See, I didn't like the way. In that. which uniqueness and individuality are not much valued. From this, you could extrapolate that com yeah, that's quality are not much valued. From this, you could extrapolate that communism okay. quality are not much valued. From this, you could extrapolate that communism is a reptilian philosophy. You could extrapolate anything about everything. If you were to regain the power to think for yourself. Previously, I've noted that society is experiencing. <clears throat> I'm running this live through OBS, and when I opened it up it slowed my computer down so this chapter is only <clears throat> only 26 minutes in but um, uh, that save right there should have just taken seconds and it took a little longer if you were to regain the power to think for yourself <clears throat> think for yourself Previously, I've noted that society is experiencing a raise in levels of consciousness. How does that it to... All right, this is one of those little bumps. How does that it to the idea that society is actually dumbing down? Oh, Fred. <laughs> he left me a good one here. On live YouTube, no less. <laughs> Consciousness. Hey, this is <laughs> this is part of the fun. Okay. Previous in a... I've said that, that society is experiencing levels of consciousness. How does that relate to the idea that society... How does that correlate to the... Okay, that's it. We'll do that. This is where I have editorial latitude. We've been working together for 10 years, so um, I kind of kind of can think and breathe what he's, I think he's intending. How does that correlate to the idea that society is actually dumbing down? Well, I call this the great divergence. We are living in times where humanity is diverging with one part of more dull mind to the other part of the conscious and there previously there was more of a middle ground <clears throat> where it could go both ways. People have mixed bags. Today we have more full consciousness. 
Okay, so I get that. All right. Previously, I've noted that society is experiencing a, ri a, a rise in... Con in the, okay, I need to redo that, too. <clears throat> Previously, I've noted... Okay. Previously, if those of you who are Fred fans know that sometimes in the book it's um, creative, right? Well, I try to smooth out what I can. Because that wouldn't sound right to use improper grammar there. <laughs> it's rise, not raise. Previously, I've noticed that society is experiencing a raise, a rise in levels of consciousness. How does that correlate to the... How does that relate to the idea that society is actually dumbing down? What he's doing is he's tying... So, previously, under the society is experiencing a raise, a rise in consciousness. How does that... correspond to the idea okay that's what I'm going to say how does that correspond to the idea okay here we go to think for yourself previously I've noted that society is experiencing a rise in levels of consciousness but how does that correspond to the idea that society correspond or correlate okay Cor I guess it doesn't matter really in levels of consciousness. But how does that correspond to the idea that society is actually dumbing down? Well, I call this the Great Divergence. We are living in times where humanity is diverging, with one part more dull-minded than ever, and another part more conscious than ever. Okay, that's super important, so I always go back and make sure that that sounds good. But how does that correspond to the idea that society... Plus, I get to drink some tea. <laughs> society is actually dumbing down. All right, let's well, see. Let's see if that whole thing... Previously, works. I've noted that society is experiencing a rise in levels of consciousness. But how does that correspond to the idea that society is actually dumbing down? Well, I call this the Great Divergence. We are living in times where humanity is diverging, with one part more dull-minded than ever, and another part more conscious than ever. All right. <clears throat> oh, this chapter's almost done. Ooh, chapter 12. How good people can take back companies from psychopaths. You want to hang around for that. <laughs> Too bad we're going to run out of time. We'll pick it up. I'll pop back in tomorrow while I'm doing that, or later today. Are more conscious than ever. Previously, there was more of a middle ground where it could go both ways. People were, quote, mixed bags. Today, we have more fully conscious versus fully unconscious people than before. There was more of a middle ground ever, and another part with one part we are living in times where humanity is diverging, with one part more dull-minded than ever, and another part more conscious than ever. Previously, there was more of a middle ground where it could go both ways. People were, quote, mixed bags. Today, quote, mixed bags. But today, we have more fully conscious than fully unconscious people than before. So it's more difficult to remain on neutral ground in light of various in light of various world events. And at the end of these audible chapters we have to leave a certain amount of time than before. So it's more difficult to remain on neutral ground in light of various in light Remain on neutral ground in light of various. So it's more difficult to remain on neutral ground in light of various. I don't like that. Just people than before. So it's more difficult to remain on neutral ground in light of various world events. Okay, that worked. Really unconscious people than before. So it's more difficult to remain on neutral ground in light of various world events. All right, and then I just mark out 
and that's about it so we'll clip out some of that whoops this I think I don't know if you can see on there but there's a little bit of noise right there and that's supposed to be silent so what I'm going to do is go a little farther than I need to go and then come back and just snip that stuff out and then I should be boom All right what it's supposed to be and then I always check the beginning make sure it's what it's supposed to be and it is and that chapter is done. Yay. Let's go to number 12. This should be good. <clears throat> chapter 12. How good people can take back companies from psychopaths. In this chapter, I show how organizations are penetrated and taken over by psychopaths and how integrous people can take them back. And how integrous people can take them back. Okay, and then at the beginning of a chapter, I always stop and just kind of clean it up here at the beginning. We have to leave a... I leave about 0.6 something. It's supposed to be less than a... or, you know, less than a second. I'm always in the sixes. So I just mark that and then clear those markers. And then, how good people can take back companies from psychopaths. This has a little mouth click in it. See that little line right there? Right there. Well, I've got a little plug-in that I run that takes it out. In this chapter, I show how organizations are penetrated and taken over by psychopaths and how integrity. retake on that got a little hair in there it's probably about time to quit and how integrous people can take them back quit and brush teeth and get ready for the reading here and then I just do a file save and um, and then let's see this is here and then this will be chapter 12 now I'm set up Uh, we'll do a couple more here. People can take them back. In terms of consciousness levels, integrous means above level 300, as from le as from my as from my book and audio book, Levels of Energy. Levels. Integrous means above level 300, as from my book and audiobook, Levels of Energy. Audiobook, Levels of Energy. Psychopath means below level 100. <laughs> All right, and then there's a chart in here. That's just an organizational chart. I'm going to. Maybe he references it here. Below level 100. The Strength and Weakness of Hierarchy Most organizational charts end up in the shape of a pyramid. At the lower to mid-consciousnesses, a sense of individuality is not yet developed, so people prefer joining a group and following a leader. Okay, now there. He just said that, and he has... Um, so what I'm going to do is a quick little insert here. There's an organizational chart in the book with the CEO at the top, and then it thins out to the managers and the heads of departments and the employees and the department managers, etc., getting bigger at the base. He likes me to um, ad lib descriptions like that. Grab that and just stick it in right here. The strength and weakness. Most organizational charts end up in the shape of a pyramid. It's 
end up in the shape of a pyramid. There's an organizational chart in the book with the CEO at the top, and then it thins out to the managers and the heads of departments and the employees and the... De- little pop on employees, and I've got a plosive filter for that. And the heads of <laughs> departments and the employees and the department managers, etc., getting bigger at the base. At the lower to mid-consciousnesses, a sense of individuality is not yet developed. So people prefer joining a group and following a leader. He is not yet developed. He is not yet developed. So people prefer joining a group and following a leader. The leader is part of another group that follows an even higher leader, and so on. There's nothing good or bad about this. It's just part of human nature. The hierarchy structure's advantages are that it provides order, orientation, and more rapid decision-making for an organization. I'm not against hierarchy and authority, but the system also has weaknesses. It is vulnerable to corruption. The larger the organization, the more vulnerable, because the leader loses sight of all the individual parts. If it's a large... All the individual parts. Individual parts. If it's a large pyramid, the top has a hard time seeing the lower parts and usually only talks with these parts immediately. Individual parts. Individual parts. If it's a large pyramid, the top has a hard time seeing the lower parts and usually only talks with the parts immediately below having no first-hand experience of what is happening in the rest of the group. The good, the bad, and the normie. The larger the organization, the more vulnerable, because the leader loses sight of all the individual parts. If it's a large pyramid, the top has a hard time seeing the lower parts and usually only talks with the parts immediately below having no first-hand experience of what is happening in the rest of the group. If it's individual parts, if it's a large pyramid, the top has a hard time seeing the lower parts and usually only talks with the parts immediately below, having no first-hand experience of what's happening in the rest of the group. All right, I'm going to stop there. This has been fun. I, you know, we'll just see. Uh, and especially, I think, when we get parallel universes of self going, that we'll come back and do some more of this. But uh, this was the first time out, trial and error, and we'll uh, see kind of what we got when we get off of here and after I finish my reading. So, ciao. I'm going to try to turn this off, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for popping in.